Hello and welcome to the AS Statistics Chapter 4 on Correlation. Now this is actually one of the shortest chapters, um, in fact throughout all of the AS. Um, it's only very touched upon very briefly. Um, let's get straight into it then. So, in this chapter what we're looking at is we're looking at comparing two um, different variables or two types of relationships. So we might want to compare something like... Um, your height and your hand span or your amount of petrol and the amount of distance you can travel to, to any two things and we can actually do this by plotting a scatter diagram or a correlation graph um, and the two couple of things that we're going to be looking at is how the equation of a line of this or regression line um, affects um, the different variables and also how um, to describe these these types of linear um, linear graphs. Okay, so um, here we've got some um, scatter graphs, and we've got different types of correlation. Now, in here, um, we're looking at the strength of the correlation, and also at the type of correlation as well. Now, the strength of the correlation is how close to a straight line they would be. Okay, so if we look at this first one on the top left over here, we can see that there is a kind of a, a correlation. Um, make sure my hands are going the right way. Um, we can see that there is a kind of correlation going up in this case, but the, the dots are a little bit all over the place. So in this one here, we have a weak correlation, but it is a positive correlation because as one increases, the other one increases as well. Um, if we look at this one on the bottom left, it's again a positive correlation, However, they form a really strong, it looks almost like it could be a straight line. So this is a strong positive correlation, okay? Now, they don't have to actually be that straight line. They can still be slightly apart, but as long as they're all close together going up, then it's a strong positive correlation. This one here looks like a, um, well, this one's going down. So as one increases, in this case, as the age increases, the weekly time on the internet goes down. So this is going to be a negative correlation. As one thing increases, the other one goes down. Um, and you notice that they're not very close together, so this is going to be a weak negative correlation. And this one here, um, well, there's no real pattern to this. The crime rate and the number of people in the city called Dave. So this is just going to be no correlation. Okay. So you've probably seen things like this at GCSE already. Um, and to be honest, we're only going to do a slight extension of this, to be honest, uh, and looking actually looking at that regression line. So this is a, a, quite an important part, um, as they do ask you things like this. So it says the vertical, the vertical axis variable usually depends on the horizontal axis value. For this reason, the distance would be the independence less explanatory. Uh, explanatory value and the cost, um, the dependent response value. So in this case, what, what we've got is we've got the independent variable at the bottom, so the thing that can actually change, and then the um, response is, is always going up. So what do we mean by that? Well, if you think about this train fare, um, it's the distance travelled in that train fare which is the thing that's going to change, isn't it? You don't go into it and say, all right, I want to spend this much, where am I going? You say, I'm going to this place and that's how far it is. And then the, the cost of the train travel depends on how far you're actually travelling. So the um, independent event in that case would be the train rate. So let's have a look now at, um, and again, in fact, if we look at another one, actually, just, just while we're here, if we look at that weak negative correlation in the top right, so it's the age, which is the independent variable. In this case, um, you don't say how many hours do people spend on the internet and what age are they? You'd say, well, what age is the person um, that we're looking at? and then how much time do they spend. So the age is the variable, the age is the person that's just the thing which is changing. Okay, so um, let's have a look at this one here. 
So you might want to pause and have a go at some of these questions yourself. I think you should probably be able to do these um, yourself. So maybe pause now and have a little go at these questions. Okay, so let's have a look at these two together. So if we look at this first one here, what kind of correlation is this? Well, as the one thing is increasing, the other one is decreasing, so this is going to be a negative correlation. And describe and interpret. So if we want to interpret the um, data on this one, in fact, we already spoke about this one a little bit, um, the older somebody is, the less time that they seem to spend on the internet. Okay, so that would be a description of this uh, relationship here. As age increases, the weekly time the internet um, decreases. Brilliant. Now, we're looking at this next important point, which is important point two. So two variables have a casual relationship if a change in one variable directly causes a change in the other. So just because two variables show a correlation it does not necessarily mean that they have a casual relationship. So Heidi Eco was interested to see whether there was a relationship between what people earn and the age at which they left education or training. She says that her data supports the conclusion that the more education causes uh, people to earn a lower hourly rate of pay. Now, give one reason why Heidi Eco's conclusion might not be valid. Now, with this one here, the problem here is that we know that the more education you get over a longer period of time that you will um, tend to earn more. Um, we've looked at data in that. However, she she's actually had a look at this and said that um, if you leave education at, let's say, 25, your hourly rate of pay to, it may be actually lower at that age, depending on where, you're, uh, where you've started. Now... This isn't because you've spent longer in education, okay? So that, that although it shows it initially, this isn't because that you spend longer in, in in education. This might be something else, like another factor, directly linked to what you've spoke about, um, which is causing this. And in this case, I think that the one that they describe is respondents who have less educa left education later would have significantly less work experience than those who have left education earlier. So because they've left education later, they've got less work experience, which means that their hourly rate of pay is going down. So it's actually the fact that they've spent less time, they've got less experience, which is causing their hourly rate of pay to go down, and not the fact that they've spent longer in education. Okay, so it's like a, it's as, as I said, it's a, a casual relationship that's uh, linked to these. So it's actually the fact that um, they have not spent as much time in educate. Sorry, they've not spent got enough work experience, which has caused that, and not the fact that they've gained all this um, educational knowledge. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna move straight on um, to what a, what is regression. So here we've got a graph. It's a positive correlation. We've got the time spent revising and then the exam marks. So it says here, I recorded um, people's exam marks as well as the time they spent revising. I want to predict how well someone will do based on the time they spent revising. How would I do this? So what they've done here is they have got some data. They have plotted it. Um, on a, a scatter diagram, and what we've they've done is they've used a regression line, a linear regression line, to explain the model. So what they've done is we've come up with a model to explain the data, and in this case they've used y is equal to a plus bx, a little bit like y equals mx plus c, where in this case a is the intercept and b is the gradient in this. We've then tried to set A and B such that the resulting Y values match the actual exam marks as closely as possible. The regression is the bit, the sorry, the, the regression bit is the act of setting the parameters of our model here, the gradient and the y-intercept of the line of best fit to explain the data. So the regression is about creating this model, creating this line in our case. So you don't actually do this anymore. We used to do this in S1 before the changes in the A-level. Um, but you used to do a, 
a thing which was called uh, the least squares regression line. And you had to square the distance away from the line it was to find out the least value of this. So um, I'll read out to you one type of the best, one type of line, one type of line of best fit is the least square regression line, which minimizes the sum of the squares of these errors. So basically what it does is it doesn't matter. The reason they square it is because sometimes you're above the line, sometimes you're below the line. And sometimes that's a positive value and sometimes that's a negative value. Now, to make these all comparable, they square them all to see the distance away. So if, let's say, you were one above the line but two below the line, it's difficult to compare those because you've got one and then you've got negative two below the line. However, if I square both of these, you end up with one and then positive four. And because they're both positive, they're easier to compare. OK, that's why you square them. But you don't need to know any of that at the moment. So this used to come up in S1, but you don't really need to know any of that anymore in this case. So we're only going to be looking at linear regression lines. But actually, there's so many lines that there could be. If you think about the, um, the crisis with um, Corona, that followed an exponential line. And looking at this one, this one could potentially follow an exponential line as well. If you see... That exponential line might be a better fit, so y equals a, b to the x. However, in this, we're only going to be looking at uh, linear regression lines. So we're going to assume that everything is directly proportional, which means as one thing increases, the other thing increases as well. So, um, interpreting a graph. So there's two things they always ask us to interpret, and that's going to be the gradient of this and the intercept of this. Now, the gradient, you need to be really descriptive with this. You need to use the data that they've got to describe this regression line. So let's just have a look at this one then. How do we interpret a gradient of three in terms of this graph? So the best way to kind of think about it is what would happen if you sub one, then two, then three? In? Well, here we've got three X. So X is the amount of time spent revising. And for every one um, increase of 1, the y will increase by 3. So y in this case is the exam marks. So how do we interpret, interpret the gradient of 3? Well, what we'd say is, for every hour we spend revising, you will get 3 more exam marks. Okay, so let's just check that. So for each hour spent revising, 3 marks are gained. So as you sub in an extra 1 each time, you get an extra three in the y value. And the y value is the exam marks, isn't it? So how do we interpret the intercept, sorry, the y-intercept of 20? Well, the y-intercept is when we're at zero, isn't it? So when we've done, in this case, no hours of revising. So if you do no hours of revising in this case, you would get a mark of 20. So let's just check that. So it says 20 marks will be obtained by turning up to the exam with no revision. And that's the case, isn't it? So if you sub in zero into this, which is no hours revising, then you would get an exam mark of 20. Okay, super. So um, here's an example. Pause now and have a little go at that yourself. I think you should be able to have a go at that yourself. It's not too tricky. So pause now and have a little go at that. OK, let's come back and we'll have a go at it together. So describe the correlation between the mean wind speed and the daily maximum gust. Now, looking at this, it's definitely a positive correlation. Um, the lines are quite close together. I think it's somewhere between a strong, it's not, it's not a really, it's not a very strong correlation. Let's check. So they've said that there's a strong positive correlation between the daily mean wind speed and the daily maximum gust. Now, you've got to be really descriptive with that. You have to say a strong positive correlation between the two variables, so between the daily mean wind speed and the daily maximum gust. You have to be really descriptive when you are doing this in A-level. Okay, so the equation of the regression line of G on W for 15 days is G is equal to 7.25 plus 1.82 W give an interpretation of the value of the gradient in this regression line. 
So the gradient of this regression line, again, we need to think about what's happening as we increase. So for every one knot we increase, the daily maximum gust knot is going to increase by 1.2, sorry, 1.82. And that would be enough to say that. So for every uh, one knot that increases in the daily mean wind speed, the daily maximum gust wind speed increases by 1.82. So I think I have looked at this before. They do it in terms of 10. That's not an issue. You, you can do it in terms of 10 or you can do it in terms of just one. I think it's always nice to do it in terms of one because um, it's always, you, you, you just know exactly where you're going with this one. They've done it in terms of 10. You can get, you're going to get the boat marks for both of those because you, you are directly interpreting that graph and that's the important thing. So the last one, justify the use of a linear regression line for this instance. Well, we're justifying the use of a linear regression line because as we, um, as we, because it's going to form a straight line. So when we're looking at this, the closer this looks like a straight line, make sure I get it the right way, the closer this looks like a straight line, the more justification for the use of using a linear regression line. And that's the point. So the stronger the um, the stronger the correlation, the more um, justification, as I said, there is to use that regression line. So let's have a look what they say. So, oops. So they say, the strong correlation suggests that there is a linear relationship between G and W, so that uh, so a linear regression line is a suitable mod model, and it actually says there the stronger the linear correlation, the more suitable the, a linear regression line is. Okay, um, we've actually only got one more question in this, and one more um, type of thing to, to discuss in this whole chapter. So it's quite a quick one, this one. So here we're looking at um, interpolating and extrapolating. Now. It's important to know what these mean. In fact, I'm going to go move over to um, here a graph. I'm just going to show you a little diagram. So if you've got uh, some data here like this, like so, and let's say you've got your ages down here. Let's have a look at those. And let's say your ages, let's say we're looking at kids and it's one, two, three, Four, all the way up to there, and then five, six, seven, and well, I'm not. It doesn't really matter what it is on this side. This is the, the important part we're looking at. We're looking at this variable. So, what we do is we end up drawing our regression line and having our regression line like so, and we use our regression line to, um, to to interpret some of the data or to make predictions in the future. So you use this basically to have a look at children age two and a half and then whatever that is over there. Now interpolate, interpolating things is when we look at things which is involved in the data. So in this case, the reason I've actually chosen an example in this case is because it's quite easy to see. So we're looking at the data which is between, in this case, the ages of one and four. So that's interpolation. So when we look, we've, we've got the range which is in there. So, for example, we've got the data here for the ages of children between one and four. If you wanted to, sorry, extrapolating is when we're using data or when we're taking data outside of our range. So, for example, in this case, looking at data for any children which is four and above. So, looking at children who are age seven and eight, you'll notice we haven't actually got any data in that. We can take our line up and we can have a look if we extend our line. But because it's outside of our range, it means that it's called extrapolation. So we're looking at things that haven't happened yet. We're, we're making a prediction on what could happen when the ages increases increase past that. So um, let's just have a look at what they say. You should only use the regression line to make predictions for the for the values of dependent variables variables that are within the data range given. Estimating a value inside the data range is known as an, known as interpolation. Estimating a value outside the data range is called extrapolating as per the cartoon. So we've got our cartoon here and um, 
it's talking about the fact that she's got the number of husbands. She's got she had no zero yesterday. She's got one today, which means that the next day she's going to have two and then three and then four. But obviously, we know that this isn't the case and this doesn't work because um, she's just she's going to have that one husband. It's going to stay like that. So um, let's have a go at this one. Maybe pause now and have a go at this question yourself. Maybe pause and have a little go at that one. Okay, let's have a go at this one together then. So the head circumference y centimetres and the gestation period x weeks for a random sample of eight newborn babies at clinic is recorded and the scattered graph shows the results. The equation of the regression line y on x is equal to y is equal to 8.91 plus 0.624x. The regression equation is used to estimate the head circumference of a baby born at 39 weeks and a baby born at 30 weeks. Comment on the reliability of these two estimates. Well, we can see that with our data, we can make a quite a, an informed guess for the baby at 39 weeks because it's inside our data and we'd be using interpolating. Um, However, at 30 weeks, it's outside our data range, so we'd be extrapolating, so we wouldn't want to comment on that one there. So let's just have a look at what they've said. So a prediction for 39 weeks is within the data range, so it's more likely to be correct. And the prediction for 30 weeks is outside the data range, so it's less likely to be accurate. And I would mention the two phrases, interpolating and extrapolating, just to show the examiner that you know what you're talking about. And a nurse wants to estimate the gestation period for a baby born with a head of 31.6 centimetres. Explain why the regression equation given above is not suitable for this estimate. Well, let's have a look at what I'd probably suggest is that you substitute that in and then work it out. So if we have, um, it's why the baby's head. Yes, it is, isn't it? So if we sub this in, so if we've got 30, 31, point six centimeters and then I go and solve it so minus eight point nine one and then divided by naught point six two four what do we get there if we got that it says that the um the age of the baby is thirty six weeks so explain why the regression line is not good for the estimate so this links back to um, what we were looking at right at the very start of this. And when we talked about the fact that we've got our independent variable. Now, x is our independent variable here. So the gestation period, which is in weeks. Now, we'd only want to make a prediction based on our independent variable. So in this case, the gestation period. And because we're working backwards with that, it means that it, it's not reliable. So let's see what um, we say here. The independent, yeah, brilliant. So the independent variable in this model is the gestation period, which is x. And you should not use the model to predict a value of x given the value of y. So we don't want to be working backwards with this. We only really want to be working forwards by thinking about our independent variable. So um, that there is the end of that chapter. Um, there's a little suggestion here from Dr. Frost himself to say that you can actually go and um, using your calculator, there's ways you can form the regression line on there um, now. You don't need to do that, but it might be worth you having a look at that. What I would suggest is that you have a go at the mixed exercise of this um, chapter and just have a go at some of those questions because although this is a short chapter, these questions do come up and you will be expected to, as I said, interpret the equation of the line, be able to describe those correlations, be able to think, talk about things like extrapolation and, um, and interpolation. So you do need to make sure that you understand it because they will come up. So thank you for watching this video on um, regression lines. 
and um, make sure you haven't got these questions because remember the only way to learn maths is to do it and have a lovely day. Thank you.